It is Thursday, December 15th, 2016, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. So I've been working on this genetic algorithm platform project for quite a while, just something fun and interesting because it allows me to experiment with different code and different techniques and also learn more about machine learning and AI. I already have some significant experience with genetic algorithms, but I really hadn't flexed my muscle enough, so I thought this would be cool. Originally, this uh, project was built in C-sharp, but I wanted to port it over to TypeScript so that it could run in a browser. So what we're going to review is just some of the stuff about the genetic algorithms. And then I'm also going to talk about how I'm doing this parallel processing using my parallel lib, which is part of TypeScript.net. And I'm also going to go into showing you that it works both with Node.js and in the browser, which is really cool. Most of the cool stuff I'm going to review, I've done in the last week, and I thought it would be really neat to kind of show off for people. So I don't want to get too in depth into how the genetic algorithm code works because it's basically a platform that I've defined some classes and interfaces that allows you to build sample problems on top of. And in this case, the sample problem I'm doing is one that I call the algebra black box. And that algebra black box, basically you pass it a function and it will sit there and it will try to unravel what's inside the box. So if I go to my sample environment code, I've been using this a uh, little bit stronger function to kind of demonstrate or test and see how well it's doing, but I'll show you. So if I use the a squared plus b squared, you know, equals c squared kind of problem, I can actually unravel this pretty quickly. So I'm gonna run this in node. And it's pretty much gonna converge here and there it is. So it only takes a, a few seconds really to find this particular math problem because it's simple enough for it to find the curve and there isn't any weird offsets that are thrown in. It's very much a product type of a problem. Now, if I come in here and give it something a little bit more difficult, like if I put back this, uh, these other offsets and I run it, it's gonna take some time. In fact, it will not really fully 100% converge on the exact solution, uh, most likely. I mean, the odds of it finding it perfectly are pretty low at this point but it will get really, really close. And so what you're gonna see is this number, there's the, the number of samples, and then there's also this fitness amount. There's two fitness measurements here. One is the correlation, so basically how tightly it actually correlates to the actual shape of the curve. And then the other number is how divergent it is from those values. So basically how offset is it from the actual curve slightly. And so, you know, obviously what you want is you want the first number to be one and you want the second number to be zero. And so it's gonna keep chewing on this for quite a while, but you know, the whole point is to kind of show, hey, it's working and you can kind of see, it's kind of hard to see here, I'll go ahead and hit stop. But some of the things you'll see here are like, I, I report out how many populations there are. I, I do kind of a special variation um, emission that basically tries to help kind of figure out what the significant bits are. And then there's some, so there's some time, you know, checks where I say, how long did it take? to select and rank things, how long, how big is the actual size of the population, and then there's some kind of testing and cleanup that does. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of people that would love me to go in depth on all this stuff, but I'm not really trying to show that part off right now, and you're welcome to look at the code. It's up on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description and have fun. Uh, I would love to have more people involved in kind of making this platform. You know, it's just, it's really more of a fun thing, but I can imagine it being useful for people. So next up, what I wanted to show off was if we go into the actual problem code. Now this problem class is basically how it measures how well the algorithms are doing. It basically says, oh, hey, for this given problem, meaning, you know, what are we trying to unravel? How good is it aligning? So in this case, the problem is directly related to this being an algebra black box and then being able to say, hey, given a certain function, which is defined in the environment, uh, how well are we getting close to that? Originally, I had this running all synchronously in Node, and it was great. And for, to go back even further, this was originally written in C Sharp, and I had it running, you know, synchronously. So now I've got it in TypeScript, and I wanted to have a simple thing working. So I'm running it in Node, and then I decided, hmm, I wonder if I can get it running in parallel. Maybe I can improve the performance a bit. And actually, it worked. It it improved it slightly, and I think it actually improved it for the long term as well. So the total amount of time it take was was reduced by a good amount. 
the individual samples were running were maybe cut in half until later on when it starts to kind of build up in the registry of algorithms. It starts to slow down a bit. But the point is, is that what's really cool is being able to execute this in parallel and have it work. So for each population that needs to be tested, it's fed the population and then it sets up a random sample for that population. And for now, I only have two parameters. I, I really would love to get more into multiple parameters, but there's a big deal with discovering what is significant within the algorithm. So it's a bit harder, but I just wanted to get the A and B variables going. So by setting up the actual samples, originally, just like I said, was doing this synchronously. Now what I do is I pipe through some of the data and then I have this function here, which this function has to be self-contained. It can't have any external references because it's converted over and sent over to a worker thread, but it's working. So what I did was to make this work is for every mathematical gene, I've created this two entity function that returns a actual renderable JavaScript version of that function. So in the case of if you have a square root symbol, it'll convert that over to be an actual math.square root. And so this is able to run in the web worker and actually get evaluated and it works great. It's really cool. Again, saving me some time. And then after the parallel ends up returning back from its thread, it then continues on and then synchronously finishes up and figures out the fitness and then adds those values into a fitness record. And again, all of this being done asynchronously through async await, very cool stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so cool. Now, the last thing I wanted to show off, which I think is really great, I, I toyed around with this for a little while, and that is getting this to run in the browser. Uh, was not much effort. I actually was able to fix a few bugs here and there by doing so, which was great. But uh, in the same way, so all I have here is I have an index.html that I'm using require.js because I find that easy. Some people don't. And I have a simple require config that basically says, hey, here's all the modules for TypeScript.net. And in this case, I'm using UMD across the board. And by using UMD, I can run it in Node and in the browser just equally well. Now, what I end up doing is I launch this index JavaScript which is here, the TypeScript is here for. So it checks to see, hey, I'm in, a, am I in a browser? Oh, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and output this out. So let's show this off. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna launch this, and then we're gonna switch back to the browser. And look at this. So now I'm emitting the data into basically an element in the browser. And so you can sit here and watch it without having to open up the console. If you open up the console, you'd see the same data that was output in Node going out to the console just as well. But it's cool. I can actually run it in the browser. I can run it in Node. And in both cases, they're running in parallel. They're running workers to, to do the, the meat of the calculations, which again is super, super cool stuff. If you guys have any questions, I'd love to hear them. I, at this point, I, I wanted to kind of make this kind of an introductory show and tell. And if you're interested in getting involved in genetic algorithms and toying around, um, check out the repo uh, for the genetic algorithm platform in the description. And also, if you're really interested in learning more TypeScript, check out my course on Udemy on TypeScript fundamentals. And until next time, uh, happy coding, and we'll see you in the next video.